A museum is linked to the notion of estate, yet it represents not only a real but also a virtual domain. By deciding who and what is allowed into its domain, the concept of the museum relies on the notion of territoriality. Curating a virtual exhibition of an actual collection, the DSL collection, is a kind of double deterritorialization. Linny Lin's installation Standard Series of Ideal Residence similarly imagines a virtual domain. Three structures made from steel frames filled with bricks simulate building elements. Lin created the piece in the early 1990s when the extensive construction of such architectural entities designed as individual homes marked China's determination to rethink the country as a market economy. The beginning economic boom rapidly entailed a significant change of the urban environment. Lin, living in China's economic laboratory, the Pearl River Delta, grasped the political and historical importance of the transformation in the individual's living conditions and the public sphere. Lin is part of the Cantonese Big Tail Elephant Working Unit, a group of four artists who at this very moment in time employed participation in the public sphere as an artistic procedure. They intervened in the urban environment as a kind of urban guerrilla, thus creating areas of estrangement and reflection. Our next stop is Gude Xin. Beijing-based Gu is one of the emblematic figures of the contemporary Chinese art. Starting as an amateur with erotic drawings of little hermaphrodite beings in the early 1980s, he became known to the Western public at the exhibition Les Magiciens de la Terre in the Centre Bonpidou in 1989 with installations made from melted plastic parts. His oeuvre focuses on the amorphous rather than on the defined form Installations using organic material, like here fruit, honey, apples and meat, play on the aspects of fluidity, decay and metamorphosis. Gu sets them here in contrast to symbols of power and stability, like for example golden frames, a flagpole and the emblematic color red. His works speak of the artist's distrust in all kinds of systems of control, no matter if bureaucratic or aesthetic, and of his claim for an essential autonomy. Zhang Huan's Big Buddha seems to be looking for transcendence in an, and autonomy in an ultra-realistic and materialistic environment too. A large wooden skeleton with an oversized skull pretends to be a Buddha. Nothing indicates that this figure is a statue of worship except for his majestic size and posture and the fact that it shelters a human figure in his hands. Even though the sculpture seems calm and balanced, the spectator cannot but feel uneasy facing this strange, unadorned idol. Zhang Huan, who is a Buddhist devotee, uses Buddhist imagery in his work since about a decade. 
Even though he tries to suggest meditative and spiritual qualities, these works nevertheless recall the violence and straightforwardness of his early performances, exposing his body to extreme acts. If we consider these performances as a kind of ascetic prelude to his recent works, then we would have to qualify sculptures like Big Buddha as the endeavor to give form to his spiritual quest. Strongly influenced by artists like, for example, Maurizio Catalan, Jeff Koons and Takashi Murakami, these works combine in a somehow baroque fashion religious folk traditions and pop art. Chen Jiren's silent video Ling Chi Echoes from a Historical Photograph is based on a historical photo taken in 1905 by a French soldier. The photo had been made known in the West by Georges Bataille. The image shows the execution of a man in early 20th century China by the execution method Ling Chi. The victim, drugged with opium, dies through slow mutilation with a knife. Chen's video touches on various aspects. First, the historical significance of the picture, which lies less in the documentation of a historical reality than in the reception of the photography. Through Bataille, the picture became an epitome of the ascetics of horror and later a symbol of alienation and the other. Second, the video reflects upon processes of consciousness such as the ecstasy evident in the facial expression of the tortured man, but also agony and lust, the agony of the victim and the strange lust of the torturer and observer. The reduced language of the video underlines these aspects. It is shot in black and white in slow motion and it is silent. Chen actually conceived of the piece as a kind of mirror, which, like the hell mirror in Chinese folk religion, shows people their desires and wrongdoings. The next piece, entitled Just For You, is a 10-channel video by the father of Chinese video art, Zhang Pei Li. Ten screens show people of different age and social status singing Happy Birthday in Mandarin. The piece recalls the Chinese karaoke fever of the late 1990s. Karaoke had become the favorite pastime of all strata of the Chinese society by then. By showing every participant on an individual screen and singing a cappella, Zhang underlines the importance of the individual in a society used to mass movements in a very reduced language typical of his works. Another piece with an extreme reduced formal language is Calm by Made in Company. The piece consists of stones and rubble spread on a moving waterbed. The breathing effect created by this movement generates both a feeling of tranquility and tension. Made in is an artist's collective initiated by Shanghai-based artist Xu Zhen in 2009. The name alludes to China as one of the world's youngest and most productive factories. We now approach Sun Yun and Pang Yu's sculpture, Angel. Angel is a life-size hyper-realistic sculpture of an angel. The angel, an old woman in a white gown and with featherless chicken wings, lies face down on the floor inside a huge net. Tangibly real, but ineffective, her physical presence humorously emphasizes the transition between the real 
the possible and the traumatic. Sunyan and Panyu work as a couple since the early 1990s and made her renown with works using actual human cadavers and other organic materials. Their works, performances, sculptures and installations are always setting conditions and situations challenging and surprising the audience. Another piece by Liang Jiuhui in this exhibition is the video One Hour of Pleasure. The video was realized in 1996 in the supply elevator of a construction site in Canton. The artist, wearing a safety helmet, is sitting in the elevator playing a video game and waiting for the workers to join him. This concrete act interrupting daily routine can actually be considered the intervention of an urban guerrilla, creating spaces of resistance and retreat within the environment of the rapid economic development that characterized China in the 1990s. Shenyuan's losing one's spittle reflects upon a totally different universe. Shen arrived in France in 1990 and remembers her arrival in a new cultural environment as a shock. She describes the process of repositioning herself as one not only implicating a change of language and expression, but also resulting in a radical shift in her way of thinking. Thus. Language is the focus in the works made in the first decade after her arrival. Playing with the connotations inherent in simple materials and tools and this juxtaposition, like, for example, here in this installation, ice and knives, Shen tries to develop a kind of universal language. The process of transformation, like the melting of the ice tongues and the consequent appearance of the knives that served as support for these tongues, is central in her installations and objects. Her sensitive works were received as a typically female approach to the question of migration, translation and globalization at large. Her use of mainly Chinese proverbs as titles is not only a slightly melancholic reminiscence of her time in China, but also a device to underline the ambiguity of meaning. The next piece is a video by one of the most important young Cantonese artists, Cao Fei. Rabbit Dogs, realized in 2003, shows Burberry-clad office workers acting and barking like dogs. The video is a persiflage on the For China new social class of the so-called white-collar workers. Cao Fei, who is born in the late 1970s, belongs to the generation whose use was characterized by China's rapid economic development. 
She addresses the important transformation of society and of her immediate environment with a witty humor bordering on absurdity, typical of Cantonese youth culture and Hong Kong film and television series. Next to rabbit dogs, we see Tsui Xiu Wen's Ladies. The video was realized with a hidden camera in the female restrooms of a well-known Beijing nightclub. It illustrates one economic sector having come again to importance with China's economic boom, prostitution. Watching and following the ladies' activities in the restrooms throughout the evening, changing outfits, readjusting makeup and underwear, the spectator finally becomes aware of the actual occupation of the women using the space. We can even eavesdrop a conversation with a client and see the women count the earnings of this evening. Xu Zhen's Comfortable is an actual minibus transformed into some kind of washing machine. Having a closer look, we can see plastic bags and clothes turning around in this unusual machine. The bus, used as this not very effective washing machine, is the typical means of transportation taking the rural population to the cities. Xu Zhen here makes an ironic comment on the growing gap between rural and metropolitan China. A second piece by Zhang Huan is Peace. Peace consists of a traditional Chinese bell with its clapper. The clapper, however, is a life-size sculpture representing the artist. The artist's body is hanging horizontally from a wooden structure. The work recalls one of Zhang Huan's early performances, for which the artist had himself hung from the ceiling with his blood dripping onto a little cooker. This time, however, corresponding to Zhang Huan's spiritual quests, his body is sublimated, covered in gold. Would striking the bell result in enlightenment? For Jiang Zhe, enlightenment lies in everyday routine, happiness and comfort in negligible details. Post Pause imagines dreamlike gaps in the city life of Shenzhen. Jiang Zhe, who spent many years in this young southern Chinese metropolis that is the symbol of China's economic and social transformation per se, here reflects upon the discrepancy between the material wishes of the mainly young city dwellers and the capacity to lead an accomplished life. Can consumerism and the satisfaction of mere material desires finally make people happy? Yang Tihui's city is a reflection of the urban reality too. Images of the city dwellers are piled up and built into a wooden tower in the form of a traditional Chinese pagoda. Here the overwhelming verticality of the modern metropolis as well as the horizontally expanding mass of the urban population is represented. 
verticality may be interpreted as a direction of economic development and is set in relation to the horizontal movement of the apparently growing crowd projected on the ground inside the pagoda. Liang, who died in 2006, was also part of the Cantonese urban guerrilla, the Big Tail Elephant Working Group. China and the Quest for Happiness is the title of a German reference work on Chinese philosophy. China and Quest for Happiness, both notions are still a focus for contemporary Chinese artists today.